Joining me now for a discussion about these races and more is Chief Political Correspondent Michael Aaron and Senior Writer and Project Editor Colleen O'Day. Great to see the two of you. And Michael, I want to fire away with you to start here. I want to ask you about District 37. Senator Loretta Weinberg is a Trenton veteran. She's had lots of influence. Gordon Johnson is likely to be elected in Bergen County this fall. What would he bring to the table? Gordon Johnson is a good team player. That's why he got the Democratic Party's backing in this election over Valerie Huddle. He's going to vote like a Democrat. He's a mainstream Democrat. He also has a law enforcement background. I believe he was a police officer at one point, but I know he was deputy sheriff of Bergen County at another point. So with police reform issues in the air, he's going to be an authoritative voice on that subject. Colleen, in that race and others, we saw how much being on the party line mattered. Yeah, you know, this was kind of the perfect science experiment, I think, when you had at least the three districts where you had incumbents running off the line, and in all three cases, they lost. I mean, in the case of the 37th district, it was it was a big loss, three to one, which I don't think anyone had seen. So clearly, the party line is, is a huge factor in elections in New Jersey. Michael, let's turn to the governor's race. Does Cittarelli have a chance, in your view? He has a long shot's chance. Uh, John, uh, Phil Murphy has many advantages as the incumbent and he's done reasonably well and he's reasonably popular. He got a good poll result out of the, a new Rutgers Eagleton poll this week. But Cittarelli's no slouch. She's been around the track once before in 2017. There's a tradition in New Jersey that you run statewide once and lose, and then the second time you try, you win. That hasn't always held up, but it used to be true. Cherelli has put out good television commercials this spring. The people working with him are smart people. I would say he's starting as a five to one uh, handicap against him, but it's not impossible that dynamics change between now and November, or the pandemic returns, or something happens to pull the rug out from under a currently popular governor. Colleen, what issues do you think are going to resonate with voters now as we move into the fall campaign season? What are you going to be watching for as these campaigns unfold? You know, I, I think as Michael just mentioned, a key thing is going to be what is the pandemic doing? I think if the pandemic stays where we are and we have low cases, um, low hospitalizations, then issues are really going to turn to things, the traditional race, the traditional issues we have, taxes, the affordability of New Jersey. And those are places where I think Chitterelli may be able to, you know, score some points. Uh, but certainly Murphy is going to keep hammering on the progressive issues that he has made a name on, you know, a higher minimum wage, um, affordable higher education, those kinds of things. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see those two forces battle it out again, unless we see the pandemic come back. And then who knows if, if, if Murphy has to reshut the state, that could really be a problem for him. Colleen, Michael, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on last night. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.